Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Claudia DeBrito. I'm the editor of Hotelier Middle East. Welcome to this ATM virtual panel. Uh, today, we will be discussing uh, the topic of hygiene and will it surpass price, facilities, and services in the new normal hotel experience. Now, a big part of the hospitality industry getting back to business will be assuring guests that it's safe for them to stay in hotels again, recognizing that consumer priorities have drastically shifted as a result of COVID-19 is just the first step of the sizable and constantly changing task that lies before operators. New cleaning and hygiene guidelines are being rolled out by hotel brands, but what will be the new norms going forward and how will they influence decision-making? With me today to discuss those points are Radisson Hotel Group Regional Director, Arabian Peninsula in East Africa, Bert Fall. Welcome, Bert. Um, Diversity VP Africa, Middle East and Turkey, Alp Aksoy. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hilton SVP Brands and Franchise Operations, EMA, John Rogers. Uh, thank you for joining us, John. And Minor Hotels VP of Operations for Middle East and Africa, Amir Goldberg. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Right, John, I am going to come to you first. Uh, Hilton uh, launched the Clean Stay Initiative uh, at the end of April. What can you tell us about the initiative and its implementation? Sure, well, thank you, Claudia, good, good morning. So um, yeah, we, we, uh, we moved really quickly as, as things started to develop in, in the over the course of winter, where we saw the crisis begin to emerge in China and then into the Middle East and into Europe as well. So we moved very quickly to think about what that meant for consumers. And, and obviously, we're incredibly fortunate in that we have a lot of guest uh, research going on at any one time. We, we have great relationships with our corporate customers so we have panels that, that we're fortunate to work with those with those guys on so it became really clear to us that that this was actually an opportunity to differentiate you know i think when things are going well in the in any business uh it, it's tough sometimes to separate from the competition i think when things get really difficult um and uh and, and the world changes that's an opportunity to differentiate so as you said we we quickly launched a clean uh, or, or, or got ready to launch clean stay so Clean Stay is really our approach to uh, revised hygiene practices in the hotels. Customers said to us, we, we desperately want to travel again, uh, but when we do, you know, we need to feel safe and we need to feel secure. And, um, and for Clean Stay, you know, we'll, if, if I take you on a very quick journey, as you arrive at the hotel, you're going to see much more active cleaning going on in the hotel. You're going to have hand sanitizer stations available. You know, uh, team members, our team members will be wearing masks. Uh, so, so that gives you an initial sense of security. And then as you go to the room, in order to enter the room, you'll, you'll break a, a seal on the room because we will have cleaned that room and sanitized that room thoroughly prior to entry. Uh, we will have hit the 10 key hotspots in the room that we know guests are most concerned about, high touch areas like light switches, remote controls. Uh, and so again, as you enter that room, you know that we have cleaned and sanitized that room before you enter. Uh, and then when you go back downstairs, uh, you'll see a lot of changes in our food and beverage area. You know, buffets clearly far more challenging from a social distancing perspective. Um, the, so we will have altered the way that we deliver food and beverage. If you have room service, we're, we're changing the way that we deliver room service to help guests feel, feel safe. Even our fitness centers will, will continue in many cases to be usable, but we will make sure that social distancing is respected, that cleaning, cleaning protocols are in place. So it's, it's a big change in the sense that the whole of the hotel will be, uh, will be even more focused than they always were on, on really reassuring guests that, that it's clean. And we're working with some great partners. So uh, we formed a relationship with uh, Mayo Clinic in the US, with Reckitt Benkeys in the US, who'll be working uh, with our partners here in EMEA, Diversity and, and Ecolab too. Um, and, uh, and those guys are, are, are real experts in this space and they help us with the science. So... So as we've been developing our protocols, we've been working closely with our partners in order to really build out the uh, build out the science and make sure that we really understand the technicalities of how we deal with this virus. Um, and, and that allows us then to present to guests a really thorough story 
uh, about how what they can expect when they stay at a Hilton. And, and we're already seeing as we research that story and we refine it based on how guests are feeling, that that, that, that makes them feel a whole lot better about traveling again. And as I said at the outset, for us being, uh, being really well positioned to give guests that reassurance, encourages them to travel again. And look, this whole industry needs to get moving again. So, um, so we're working hard on that. And the last thing I would say is it, it also helps as we work with governments around the world to help governments understand that travel can be safe and that in the hotel business, uh, working with great partners, we can deliver that, that safety and that security that we know our corporate customers and, and governments too are looking for us to deliver. So yeah, we're, we're excited about it. We, we begin rolling out really this month, uh, right around the world, 6,100 hotels, all delivering similar protocols around the world. And, um, and we're, we're, we're ready to tell that story to our customers now, which is, which is great. Thank you for that, John. Um, I uh, I just also wanted to remind our viewers that the but if you have any questions at all for for our experts that are gathered here today, please feel free uh, to to ask us or to send in a question. Um, John mentioned uh, some partners that they're working with. Um, Alp, um, your your company is one of them. Uh, would you like to explain um, just quickly how it is that you're working with with hotel groups during this time? Well, thank thank you, Claudia. Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a very interesting time for diversity at this point in time, uh, bearing huge responsibilities because apparently we would like to get the hospitality business back uh, as soon as possible, uh, and I think it's suffering the biggest challenge of its uh, lifetime ever. So uh, we are working very closely with the likes of Hilton, Radisson, Minor Group, uh, Accor Group. Uh, and many others, actually, as especially when you're talking to buy diversity is in a position to uh, serve 75% of the five star market. So, in a sense, uh, we even make we, even we are responsible for the brand of Dubai welcoming the guests back to the hotels. Uh, on global basis, uh, with these brands, there are continuous partnerships going on right now. A lot of work groups working together, uh, creating reopening packs. Uh, this, these reopening packs are based on the previous processes that were there. They are actually working on top of what is already there to define where the critical areas are with the new challenge uh, that COVID actually has presented to us. And COVID, we are learning about, about COVID almost every day. Uh, it was uh, transmitted through air, now it, it isn't, the surfaces were important, maybe they're not. So every day uh, from scientists we're getting more information and according to that we are trying to make sure that uh, a guest's adventure journey into a hotel is as safe as possible uh, as yesterday uh, and there's a lot of work going on. There's a lot of trainings uh, that are being prepared so that each and every member uh, of the cleaning teams and management within these hotels are ready uh, to deliver the peace of mind uh, for the guests. Um. It's uh, definitely it's 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 about it definitely about reassurance and um, and making sure that the guests know that it's safe to come out there. It's it, confidence is key during this time, um, and and I'm sure your company has a, a major part to play in that. Um, you mentioned that that you're working with Radisson as well, Bert. I would like to bring you into into this conversation as well. Um, integration of these of these new protocols is is really important and making sure that they seamlessly blend with your with your brand dna with 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 your brand identity that that your returning customers are so familiar with um, could you uh, please explain or, or talk about how you're integrating these um, your radisson hotel safety uh, protocol um, into your brand uh, identity Certainly, and good morning all. Thank you, Claudia. Um, well, Radisson have launched the 
as you said, the Radisson Hotel Safety Protocol, uh, which I think similar to many companies is a very comprehensive review of all safety and security procedures. And we did that uh, in conjunction with SGS, uh, the world's leading testing, uh, verification and certification company. Uh, and so what we will be doing is also uh, our protocol covers uh, enhanced cleaning and sanitization uh, throughout the, the hotels. Uh, cleaning and health and safety have always been extremely high priorities for hotels, but even more so now, and there's a different level in terms of the detail of sanitization that's being undertaken. Uh, training of all staff, recording of that training, uh, and ensuring that we have the right equipment in place, uh, such as personal protective equipment uh, and hand sanitization stations throughout. Um, and that is then being combined uh, with uh, comprehensive social distancing measures throughout the hotel. So the protocol is being, is being rolled out uh, as we speak in hotels and SGS will then uh, independently certify that hotels have reached the correct standard uh, and hotels will then bear the, the SGS certificate. And that is being uh, implemented, uh, as I said, throughout all the hotels in the company and incorporated into our brand standards. So you ask the question, uh, how is that going to impact the brand? That will become a core brand standard in the future. Great. Um, what about um, what about you, Amir, with um, with minor hotels? Is uh, how are you ensuring that that all of these new protocols are, are seamlessly blending in and, and not affecting what it is that customers go to for? Obviously, they they come and, and stay at a minor hotel whichever brand um, they choose to stay at. And, and they're expecting certain, certain things from you. Um, how are you ensuring their safety while making sure that, that those standards are, are still being met? Can you hear me now? Yeah, so I can hear you. <laughs> I mean, it's a very interesting question. I think I think we, we went back down to the drawing board and we really looked at, um, especially if you look at the Anantara brand, the Anantara brand is an experiential brand. Um, and for us, it's critical that whilst we are fully compliant and, and go above the call of duty to ensure that, that the brand promise and the, and the health and safety uh, is, is meeting the expectations of, of, the, of the guests and the consumers moving forward, we wouldn't take away from the core of, of, of the brand such as Anantara being an experiential brand. And that's why we launched the Stay With Peace of Mind uh, program for the Anantara brand, uh, which actually went back to the drawing board, reviewed the, what we call the six-step guest cycle. Uh, we reviewed all the different touch points that are, that, that are in place of creating those experiences for the guest, not taking away the experiences, but creating an assurance for the guests that, that all the touch points are all being individually measured. Um, and obviously uh, through our, our partners, Diversity, Ecolab, et cetera, um, ensuring that, that we're fully compliant and going above the call of duty. I think what's interesting for us when we started really reviewing this, I think a, a great realization for us, and I think it would probably be the same for, for a lot of other major brands as well. A lot of these measures are currently in place. We do have on properties, um, in, in, in all of our hotels, we do have a function called a health and safety manager who normally looks from a heart of house perspective into all of the different measures that are in place from the supply chain factor all the way to stewarding, housekeeping, laundry, kitchens, etc. that make sure that we're HACCP certified, ISO certified, etc. This is normally a heart of house role and synonymous with, with, with brands such as Anantaras and Avani, etc. When people buy into a brand, they expect these as a given. They expect health and safety to be there. Now the difference is that you want to magnify that. You want to bring the role of a health and safety manager into the front, and you want to actually put that as 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 a, a kind of a, a a role model for the consumer. They can see that we have that visibly in place. So we launched what we call in in the Anantar program the guest guardian, and and in the Avani we call the Avani Shield agent, which in effect is the traditional health and safety manager, but moved into the front of house. 
Um, and to look at sort of the guest journey, what I always say is interesting is, as a, as a guest, you would walk into a lobby of a five-star hotel or a beautiful hotel, you would, you, would, you would expect and you would see that the marble is spotless, you would see everything is perfectly clean and maintained, and you would never really want to see anyone physically doing the work or physically um, sanitizing and cleaning. The difference now is you would want to see that. You would want to walk into the lobby. The assurance in the brand is that you would visibly see the public area team there. You would visibly want to see sanitizers. You want to see this infection program happening. And I think the difference now and before is really not that far. You know, we were already partnering with partners such as Diverse and Ecolab, and we were already using a lot of the chemicals that were, um, I would not say COVID proof, but they were definitely um, measured at that level that all bacteria and germs, etc., would be extinguished. Now you just want to make it visible. You want to add it into your brand messaging. You want the guests and the consumer to be reassured that the brand is synonymous with health and safety as a first priority, but the experiences are still there and retained. And I think that's where for us, the, the six step guest cycle remains, the experiences remain, but we just look at those individual touch points and we make sure that we obviously both magnify those for the consumer and the guest, and also um, obviously elevate some of the standards um, so that you know, so that, so that we minimize any form of risk or to our guests as well. So it's an interesting time. And I think for us, it, it's been more of, of reassuring ourselves, our team members. And because you have to think as well, it starts with your team members. You want them to be first proud and knowing that we are compliant so that they also can, can convey that message onto the guest. Um, and, and, and that's been sort of the journey we've gone through. And now we're ready to, to, to host our guests uh, with peace of mind. Wonderful, thank you, Amir. Um, we're just gonna take a couple of questions, um, if that's okay. So we've had um, a question from Robinson Johnson, um, who's, who's asking, will there be hygiene inspection and certification given to hotels by the health authorities to boost guests' confidence? Um, who would want to tackle that? John, maybe? Yeah, well, sure, I'm happy to. Um, so, so obviously in, in in, in, it varies by market around the world, but for those exist today, you know, we, we have we have a, a regular interaction with authorities in terms of health and safety. Obviously, in every market we operate in, um, and and speaking for Hilton, you know, we, we operate a, a health and safety standard that that is at or above any any other market in the world. So, so uh, those are in place, but also uh, as you can imagine, we have uh, changed the way that we that we do our auditing in hotels, so we'll be paying as, as we as we get into auditing, clean stay, we'll be having a great deal more attention on that. And, and also we're changing the way that we ask questions of our customers, you know, so we have obviously customer surveying that, that most of the big operators would run uh, in, in all our hotels. So we're constantly listening to customer feedback on every hotel we have around the world. And, and we're making changes changes to that as well. So so we have kind of health authority, if you like, uh, government um, checking. We're doing our own auditing and stepping that up, and also changing changing the way that we listen to customers as well, and making sure that we are understanding from our customers whether they feel reassured. Because in the end, that that's the most important thing of all. And and as as um, as was just said, you know, what's what's really critical is that guests see. And feel the difference when they when they come to uh, a hotel. They feel safe. They feel reassured, and and all of those processes really are designed to achieve that that sense in the customer's mind that look, I feel good about travelling. I feel good about being in a Hilton. I feel safe. I still feel the incredible warmth of Hilton hospitality, and and uh, you know I know we'll talk a little bit about that later. But but of course we want to continue for people to feel that. Um, but you know, uh, whereas previously in the in in the Hilton brand, safety and security is just a given. I think in 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 our brand and and all of the hotel brands now around the world, people are, you you really need to step up and help have people really feel that difference. So so yeah, we have we have those kind of checks and balances in place, and um, we'll absolutely continue to do so. Wonderful, thank you, John. Um, one more question um, from Rahul Kumar. Um, he said, this is, uh, this is very comforting. How are hotels looking at providing assurance to guests who are looking at hosting events and celebrations with large gatherings at their premises? Uh, depending on government guidelines, are the hotels ready and equipped 
to host large gatherings again. Um, who would like to take this one on? <laughs> uh, Bert, uh, may, uh, uh, when do you see Radisson Hotels uh, being ready to, um, to, to take on large gatherings? Obviously conferences and, and MICE um, services are, are you know, a, a big revenue driver for, for properties. When do you see that coming back, if you do? Okay, well, a couple of questions there, uh, Claudia. Firstly, in uh, answer to the first question, uh, the Radisson Hotel Safety Protocol uh, initially comprises 20 steps for the hotel generally, and then there is a separate 10-step protocol for meeting and events. Uh, and obviously, a lot of that uh, imitates uh, elements from the overall hotel safety protocol. Uh, but it also focuses very much on social distancing uh, because that is the, the concern. So uh, when will we be ready? Uh, we're ready now, uh, or at least in the, in the coming weeks in terms of uh, rolling out the, the entire safety protocol, incorporating the meeting and events section. Uh, in terms of when will the business come back, that's a more difficult question to answer. Um, we would all like to think that it's going to come back quite uh, reasonably quickly, but I think that we need to be realistic uh, in terms of large meetings and events. Uh, that's probably going to take some time. And it will depend on many factors. Uh, it will depend on how uh, the pandemic uh, moves forward, uh, because as has been mentioned already, it's very much about confidence. And if people feel confident that they can come out and be safe in an environment, then I think they will. Right. Thank you very much. Um, another question that's come in, oh, they're all coming in now. Um, given all these expenses, room rates will definitely increase. Do you think guests are willing to spend more for their safety? Um, we also have to take into consideration that lots of people have lost their jobs. Um, that comes from Ria San Juan, who is the senior sales manager at Crimson Resort and Spa Boracay. Um, Amir, I'm going to come to you on that one. Um, are, will um, customers be willing to spend more given that with all of these protocols, these extra expenses will have to be passed on somewhere. It's actually very interesting because we're seeing already now um, a slight surge coming in. You know, there is obviously already a, a pinned up demand. A lot of guests are already, you know, they've been staying at home. They've had to cancel their travels over the last three to six months. And they're all weary of wanting to travel again. And, and we've, we've seen now, especially with our Villa product brands, uh, you know, properties like Anantara de Palm and a number of other hotels where we do have villas and private pools. A lot of guests are actually wanting to come back. And I think obviously there's going to be price sensitivity. The consumers will be looking out. And I expect as well when the market does come back slowly into recovery between Q3, Q4, where we start seeing staycations and regional travel, hopefully recovering slightly, there's going to be a price war in the market. And I expect that to happen where across all brands. But at the same time, I think the guests and the consumers from the trends I'm seeing at the moment in some of our properties over the last weeks where we've seen a good surge of demand, price hasn't been the first priority. And I think the first priority is, you know, that they're assured, first of all, that, that you know, that the health and safety measures are in place, that they're assured that, you know, we have the offerings which are suited. In this case, our villa products have been absolutely fantastic for that because it, it gives an automated social distancing. It gives them you know, a contactless and seamless experience. And I think actually, you know, we have to be wary of the fact that there has been a lot of layoffs and there has been an economic disbursement that's happened over the last period. And we as, 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 as hoteliers as well have to, have to adapt to that as well. And, and the cost of operating has gone up. You know, we are now with all the measures that we're putting in with the guest guardians and all the different the team members that have to be in place to ensure social distancing is in place from check-in to check-out, obviously that adds additional cost to the operation. And also looking at the entire supply chain that we have, that also adds cost. Uh, but I think for me, and I, and I see it already with, with a lot of the inquiries we're getting, the guests are not calling in asking what is the price. They're calling in to assure, are we maintaining all of the standards? Are we going above? And if that's the case, I think a lot of them will return. You have to factor in that a lot of people have had to cancel 
probably two rounds of holidays. They've had their winter holidays canceled, now potentially the summer holidays are canceled. So a lot of people are eager to come back in and start traveling again. Um, so with that in mind, I think the first priority will not be price. I think the first priority will be health and safety and that assurance that we will give. And as we slowly move towards, I think, next year, you would start seeing that, that the, the prices will regulate themselves. And, 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 and I think the guests will adopt the new norm as much as we had to adopt the new norm. Um, and the new norm is not necessarily a, a, a price increase, but it's more a new adoption of how do we operate um, in a new market. Because as well that we have to do social distancing, we are all obviously also right-sizing manning structures. We're also right-sizing operating structures to fit the new norm um, of potentially having less guests and less crowd and less mass tourism and more experiential individual travelers that, that, that come to enjoy our resorts and destinations. Right. Thank you, Amir. Um, John, I saw you nodding your head there. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you agree with no, that? No, I, 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 think, I think the key point is, mm. is this is a very competitive market and, mm. uh, and, and that's not going to change, right? So <laughs> the cust customers will be making, making, their own, making their decisions based on all the factors that they had before. But I think with the added factor of you know, where do I feel safe, where do I feel secure, um, I think it is certainly true that larger brands will, will in, in, in many cases, will recognize brands, will benefit from that. So having a strong brand in the market uh, will be really important to people because strong brands tend to be, be more reassuring kind of by definition. Um, but look, I don't think anyone should assume that prices will go up proportionate to the cost pressure that the that, that, that hotels will face as a result of having to put in these processes. I mean, hot, hotels will continue to compete aggressively for customers business but but i think as uh, as amir was saying yeah the the feedback we're getting from our big corporate customers you know we have big customer advisory boards great partners that we work with they're telling us look guys you know you, you've got to get this right we need to feel safe um you, you asked or someone earlier asked about the whole meeting side i think that's incredibly important you know we're developing similar processes to the ones that I just described for, for Hilton in, in, in for the individual guest in the meeting space as well. So we will, we will have a far more additional um, safety processes in place for meetings. We'll be sealing rooms. We'll be socially distancing appropriately. We'll be changing the way that we deliver food and beverage. I mean, all of that, um, of course, puts a stress on our operations. But, but if you want to do business in this new normal, um, then, then that's then that's what you need to do, and and uh, we're hearing that loud and clear from our customers. So, so look, I think the market will be slightly different, but as it comes back, trust me, you know it's going to be no less competitive than it was um, before all this happened. Wonderful, thank you, John. Um, we we have another question um, from Balaji from TVO Holidays. He's asking. Um, could you explain what are the touch points so that we can brief clients about um, about the uh, what, sorry about what the common touch points are and how they should handle themselves not only at hotels but at surroundings so that the customers are well informed and they can take care of themselves. Alp, I'm going to come to you on that one. Yeah. Uh... Let me give away all the expertise. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm. This is this is a great conversation. I'm, I'm listening to everybody, and I'm, I'm hearing a couple of things. Uh, for one thing, we are talking about very interesting concepts here. I mean, imagine this, like the the topic of this conversation, will hygiene surpass price and all those things. Let me ask you this question. Let's turn this thing around. Without hygiene, would we actually have a hospitality industry before or after COVID? There is no way for, for, for the cheapest of prices or the best of the smiles, you would knowingly go and stay in a dirty hotel. So it's actually hygiene is embedded into all these brands that, are doing a, that have been doing a great, great job until today. What's, I think the difference and, uh, is, uh, and I think Amir already said this, it was a given. It was taken for granted until something really went wrong. And what went wrong was when that marble welcoming the guests had st uh, streaks on them, 
which gave evidence that the hotel didn't really care about the overall hygiene. Maybe they did, but guests always pick up these evidences along the way. Uh, I will come to the answer of the question, but I think this is this is this is this is what has changed now. And as John said, whoever is going to do a very good job in defining their processes and communicating their processes. And actually, I think one of the most critical factors is to involve the guest into this as well. Uh, they will be able to differentiate their brand today. Uh, coming back to coming back to the question, uh, I think that's what's really changing compared to yesterday. Uh, what has been defined for a very long time are called critical control points. Uh, we all know that the most risky uh, item within a room is the remote control or the doorknob or the electricity uh, keys uh, or at the elevator, the buttons. So it's all these surfaces that are touched by multiple individuals very frequently or harder to clean with a certain frequency. So right now, on top of what has been done, what, what's really changing is, is that we are sharing and confirming these critical control points with our partners, with our customers. Uh, they are actually putting the processes together with us to make sure the frequency of taking care of these points are uh, actually much closer to each other. So uh, while they were cleaned every day, now we are down to four hours, for example. Mm -hmm. And as John said, uh, there are hotels who are taking uh, the, the steps to say, hey, here's a sticker for you which confirms that you are the first one to come into this room and to touch these surfaces that has just been cleaned by our, by our uh, hotel teams for you and you're going to be safe here. So I think what's happening today, these very good brands, I mean, especially on this call, have already been doing a very good job creating a safe environment because without safe and without hygienic, we wouldn't be in business anyhow, Absolutely. I mean, as, as hotels. Uh, but today, we are taking one step further, involving the guest in, which is extremely important, uh, and, and creating hygiene as a differentiator to the brand, which used to be a given. I don't know if any of you today, hygiene is a very interesting concept. It's, it's, it's not the most exciting thing to talk about. Uh, I mean, today my wife is asking me each time I come from outside, did you wash your hands? Did she wash your hands? And my personal uh, reaction is, of course I did. Why are you even asking me? Maybe sometimes that I didn't. Yeah. So this is this is the this is the mentality that is now changing because we know that washing our hands is actually good for us. Having the hotel clean for sure is important for us, for our business, and for our guests. So yeah, let me stop there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alp. I think I think you more than answered the question and really underlined how how important how important it is um, for it just in general and it always was important. I just feel that this this um, situation and the current situation has really put a spotlight um, on on how vital it is. Um, Amir, I'm going to come to you um, and talk about personalization, um, safety and service. So how do we combine all of those? Um, you mentioned uh, the Stay With Peace of Mind um, initiative um, that, that, that you implemented um, with Minor. Um, the, there was a question that came in from Khaled Al Idrisi who said, how will you balance personalization and relationship building in the hotels with the physical distancing protocols in place. I think it's very interesting, and I think 
you know, we've already seen a shift over the last years, especially with the shift in Gen X, Gen Y, where technology has come into play more and more. Um, the traditional way of operating, and you know, if I take a lot of our resort brands, etc., you know, it used to be very much physical. You need to, you know, you would have a butler or a villa host experience that would be creating or, or curating your experience for you. That used to be very much a face-to-face -face contact. It used to create the whole journey. How would your experience in the stay be uh, prior to arrival, during stay, and, and post-stay? Nowadays, I think technology has helped us already going a long way by creating memories and experiences without being physically in contact with the guest. So we're already now seeing that shifting for the long for, for a period of time with, 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 with the new generation who are much more tech savvy and our industry having to shift more into that as well. And I think now that's gonna even support us all the more. I think it, it is it is all about you know curating experiences curating individual guest journeys. Um, and you don't need to be, and I think, you know, and it's a misconception, creating experiences doesn't necessarily mean physical contact. Experiences, it's all, about, it's, a lot, it's all about individualization. It's all about probably going away from the traditional mass tourism concept and saying, what can I do for you as an individual or a family? And I think that that's where we sort of have seen a surge into a lot of the, the things that we've been doing, you know, Anant Anantara has been synonymous with experiences historically, and some of the some of the, the, the offerings we have, such as the dining by design, which is an individual dining experience for a guest in a different locations, such as some of the uh, the wellness journeys and experiences that we've already had in play, but now it's even elevated all the more. I think a lot of those will now be elevated even more through technology. And I think it is a matter of now looking at how do I cleverly create these top contactless experiences from a contactless concierge service to having the entire journey curated and created prior to arrival. And when they're there in, in house with us, um, you know, guests don't want to necessarily be masked in with everyone else. They would want to have, I'm here with my family. I want to have a dining experience on the terrace. I want to have a private experience here. I want to go through a wellness journey, which I think it's going to be one of the big, big points for us. And, and you know, we've been traditionally known with the Antara Spa and the Balanced Wellness as, as offering a, a very uh, extensive program within the wellness uh, space. And I think historically, especially within the Middle East, wellness has, has, has not yet triggered to the level it should do. And I think with all of the personalized and content experiences, you're going to see more and more journeys being created where guests say, you know, I will come for a journey where I will boost my immune system, my health and well-being. I will tie then with some nice culinary journeys. And all of that can be done technologically, digitally, without being physically in contact. Again, experiences are, are, are all about feelings and emotions. It's not about physically being face-to-face -face with a person. We saw it actually when, um, when we were relaunching the villa host experiences. You know, traditionally, if you look at what we call the classic luxury, the villa host or the butler concept used to be very much in your face. You would have a butler staying in with you. He would be creating the journeys with you, sitting with you and, and curating everything. Now, the guest doesn't want that. The guest wants to, if I need something, you're there. If I don't, you're not visible. And that's where digital applications and all of that comes into play and, and then really curating experiences for the individuals. Um, so I think moving forward, it's, it's going to be sort of a shift more and more into that direction and into that space. Um, and we're seeing it already, as I mentioned, with a number of hotels. And I think we just have to magnify that even further um, as, as, as the borders open across different countries. Sorry, you're muted. We lost you. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> So Amir, you um, just imagine I said something really great. Um, Amir, um, you mentioned uh, the use of technology and, and digital tools um, as, as a way to connect and, and provide those experiences that customers are now expecting. But would, would you agree with that um, at your properties? Is, is the use of, of, of technology increasing? Uh, what would you say um, with that regard? Undoubtedly. I mean, it was before, uh, Claudia, it certainly is now. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in the final stages of developing our remote check-in, uh, which will simplify 
a check-in for guests. And I think just going back to the question uh, about personalization for guests, you know, we we are in the hospitality business uh, in Radisson. Our, uh, our, our ethos is, yes, I can. Uh, and it's about uh, delivering to, to guests what they want to receive. Uh, and I think more and more uh, nowadays, the, the personalized experience uh, for guests that they want to receive uh, is one where they will feel safe and secure. And that's, a, that's the baseline and that's what we've been talking about today. Uh, but technology undoubtedly uh, will advance more quickly as a result of this pandemic and certain of it. Wonderful, thank you. Um, just our, our final point of, of discussion, we've got five minutes left. So, um, so unfortunately we have to start wrapping up, but I wanted to come uh, to you, Alp, because before um, the, the COVID pandemic, we, we were talking, the main point of discussion in hospitality was sustainability and, you know, no plastic straws and no bottles and no single use amenities. And we were really moving um, in, in that direction. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the things that have maybe taken a back seat uh, is, is sustainability due to the current situation. Would you agree with that? And what are you seeing uh, with, the, with the operators that you're working with currently? Uh, interesting question. Basically, I think I, think, I think I have to say you need to first agree on the definition of sustainability to be able to answer that question. Because yes, you're totally right. Four months ago, we were talking about all the plastic waste. How are we going to reduce that? Uh, but right now, probably, hey, if I said that, that's not even in the priorities. On the other hand, when you talk about sustainability, sustainability has multiple legs. Uh, very, a, a very generic definition is it has the columns of people, planet, and profit. So you have to make sure that people are safe. You have to make sure that we are actually taking care of the planet in the long run, uh, and and the, the businesses are actually in a in a in a safe manner to be able to support those both legs. Now, I think I think with the current situation, uh, we are being challenged that the, the the prioritization in between these three items are uh, might have to shift. Yes, today we might have to be talking about the people perspective. How are we going to keep the people safe? Maybe talk about the plastic a little bit less at this point in time. But I think a good uh, way of looking, uh, an optimistic way of looking at this COVID uh, crisis is that it kind of gave us a reset. So within this reset, we are able to look into what we're doing in terms of hygiene. How are we going to improve it? in terms of technology, how are we going to improve it? Many of the technologies uh, that, for example, Bert just discussed have been under discussions for a long time, I think. And now we, were, we had a chance to be able to use them with, as a, as a, to increase the sustainability that the people are safer again. So sustainability hasn't gone anywhere. Sustainability is still there, but continuously, I think, the, mo the, 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 mo the moment we understand sustainability as a whole, uh, we will see the, which items within that, where we address as priority is going to change. And, and we haven't forgotten sustainability. I think we are testing a lot of things to manage today, and we will come back to these things in time, uh, and, and not, not a, in, a, in, a, in a long time. Uh, for example, my company as a, a, a custodian of hygiene, when we talk about hygiene, we also have to talk about efficient hygiene. Efficient hygiene means saving on water, saving on energy, which in return help you with the sustainability, environmental sustainability, once again. And one thing I would like to share with you, a personal experience uh, before we're coming to close very quickly. Uh, five years ago, my company changed its vision statement. And we said, we, go, we are here to create a healthy and safe world where people are free to live their lives. 
And once we had that, it, it was very interesting. While it excited a lot of people, a lot of people were like, us freeing people's lives? What are we talking about? And I think today, with this COVID experience, we have seen where hygiene plays a role, that with proper hygiene, we are not stuck home in a quarantine anymore, that with proper hygiene, we will be able to surpass this, this, this uh, problem. And hopefully, with the understanding of the guest as well, uh, the social distancing rules will also ease, and we will go back to a, a, a more normal life in the near future. And it's all about creating a cleaner and healthier, uh, safer world where people are free to live their lives. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alp, for that. I think that's that's a lovely sentiment to end on. Um, you know, the obviously the lasting effects uh, of, of this current situation remain to be seen. I think it's safe to say that it won't be the same, um, but hopefully that th there are some positives that we can draw um, from this. And it's great to see the unification coming out of the hospitality industry. It's great to see groups working together, sharing knowledge. And, and I'd like to thank all of you for, for your time, um, for, for sharing your expertise. Um, we had hundreds of people on. Sorry if we didn't get to your question today, um, but um, rest assured that everyone on this panel and all of the hotel groups around the world are doing everything that they can to ensure a safe and healthy environment for the hospitality to get back on its feet again i think that's what we can all agree on um, and as soon as we get to back to get back to business the better um, thank you once again to everyone for who who watched and i'd like to say a big thank you to my panelists once more radisson hotel group regional director of arabian peninsula and east africa bert fall um, diversity vp of africa Middle East and Turkey, Alp Aksoy, Hilton SVP of Brands and Franchise Operations, EMA, John Rogers and Minor Hotels, VP of Operations for Middle East and Africa, Amir Balberg, I've been Claudia Debrito, uh, the editor of Hotelier Middle East. Thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.